Welcome to the Hazel Rockets podcast, the number one golf podcast for new product launches, interviews with industry experts, golf trends, and more. Here are your hosts, Jen, Ken, and Bill. Welcome to Hazel Rockets. I'm Jen. I'm Ken. And I'm Bill. And Jennifer has the giggles. And we are already having fun today. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. We're excited. We are uh, have our special guest, Jason Libby, is going to be in studio with us in a little bit to talk all things Mizuno. There's tons of new products coming out for 2020. I was going to say, by the time this airs, we will have come back from the social media marketing world where we will have learned um, lots of tips on how to put together a better, better podcast. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Does it, one of them is get the giggles before you start? Is that one of the I don't know. So. I don't know. And this will have already aired after we've done this, and but we haven't been to the... Don't forget, they're sure. going to learn how to do it better. Better. Yes. Better. Better. All uh, right. No, we are excited about it. It's actually, uh, Jennifer has been seven or eight years. I've got a chance to attend the last couple of years, and... Um, all the major social media executives around the world attend this seminar. It's pretty wild. There's thousands of, uh, of executives there. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. It'll be good. All right. And uh, when we come back, maybe we'll tell you about it. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. What are we talking about this week? Well, are we going to uh, just go straight to introduce Jason? Who is Jason? So Jason Libby is the Norma California golf representative from Zuno Golf. He actually started on our side of the business. He actually worked for golf headquarters up in Reno uh, as a buyer and a salesperson for years and years. Uh, went over to the trade side a couple of years ago, worked for Bobby Jones Apparel, um, and just recently has gone to work for Mizuno Golf USA and uh, is going to be in studio talking about all things Mizuno with us. I think that sounds fun. Before we do that, even though you already did that. Yes. Um, we also had Ping here earlier this week. Not just Northern California, our Ping rep, but we had like all the big wigs from Ping. And uh, we're hoping to do something kind of fun with Ping in the next uh, few months. Yeah. We have to go, go for it. Um, we are going to uh, take... Uh, uh, the photographers and videographers and myself and your brother, Tom, to uh, Phoenix and uh, probably go through the Phoenix factory. I've already been there. I think all of us yep. have been there. But um, in bringing you guys, our audience, um, to kind of give a behind the scenes tour of a few of the manufacturing processes, um, hopefully bring you guys into the, um, what is the gold? The room? gold vault? Yeah, the vault. Um, yeah, every, for those that don't know, for every time that a ping staffer wins, with you a ping. Have, yeah, with a ping putter, they actually make two putters. They make one that's gold plated, and um, if it's a major, it's actually made out of solid gold. Um, but it, then it goes into the gold vault. So there's and then literally the second putter goes to the, goes to the yeah. putter. But there's a, a literal bank vault that ha houses all of these gold putters in it, and it's pretty remarkable. Fascinating. Yeah. It's a fun place to go inside. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but not only that, we also want to maybe uh, tell some stories while we're back yeah, there and share them with the audience. Talk to the designers and the guys that run Ping Man and um, the fitters and uh, hopefully a couple, uh, maybe even some of the Solheim family, and yeah. actually let them tell their family story. And if you do the assembly line yeah and i really want to so share fun. the the ping works uh yeah. story i think that's a really neat uh, yeah. story to tell as well so hopefully uh not exactly sure we don't have that uh scheduled quite yet but uh that was a really fun meeting with the ping people yeah. and uh hopefully that will be coming in the next uh several weeks or a few months out from now yeah and uh with that we should bring um our mizuno rep in right okay you have this magic snap going down you're gonna lay it out all right. Okay. I'm going to snap my fingers, and then we're going to... Uh, my camera guys just looked at each other like, great, now we're going to have to edit this in again. Um, and then when I uh, when snap my return, fingers... When we return, Jason will be here. When we return, Jason will be here. Ready, everyone? Here we go. Boom. We're back. How would we do? We'll see how we did when we look at post-production on this. But look, Jason, you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Fired up to be here. Yeah. You have brought so many cool toys with you today. Either that or you couldn't afford the shafts. I'm not <laughs> sure which. But if you're listening to us, definitely you should think about um, checking us out on our YouTube channel, Morton Golf Sales, 
because we have lots of component pieces with us today, correct? Yes, we brought a little bit of everything from the line. I have the new woods and our, our fabulous irons. We have eight gold medal um, hot list irons this year. And uh, I have also brought the uh, copper iron, which we made in the limited edition, which will be featured here at the Superstore. And we made 500 sets of those. And um, there's a really neat story behind it. Um, we actually had an iron called the TN87, which was designed by Tommy Nakajima. Um, and it came out in 87, and it had a copper underlay. And so um, our designers went to Mizuno, Japan, and they said, we need to bring this back because it feels incredible. And um, you know, players really loved it, had a great following. And what they did is to convince um, Mizuno Japan to fund this because it is expensive to make. They made 12 heads without the copper underlay, and then they made 12 heads with. And they took them to our top 12 Mizuno staff players on tour, and they had them blind test these heads. And every um, staff player, 12 out of 12, picked the copper underlay head. Wow. So that's how we made this and came to make this. And um, it's just been fabulous. So we have the, the copper underlay in our MP20, our uh, MMC, and our hot metal blade. And so the feel is tremendous, and the performance is still uh, what you expect from a Mizuno, but uh, very unique. And um, it, it borrows elements from a lot of our iconic clubs. It has an MP33 sole. Um, it has an MP29 toe. And uh, it just is a, is a great performing iron. So we're now, very proud of it. For those that are watching us, Jennifer's holding a copper iron. <clears throat> and you mentioned that it, so all of the, the regular production irons have the copper underlay, but then regular chrome over the top of it. Yes. You guys are going to have an iron out in a couple months that has no chrome on it. Yes. Limited Just to copper. 500? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, only 500 sets made. Wow, yeah. I didn't know it was that yeah. exclusive. And I know the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop has... We've got a couple sets on the way. and uh, Will we be um, putting any of those on Morton Golf Sales? Most likely, yes. So mm -hmm. we'll probably do a pre-sale on them because I have a feeling they're going to be really, really in demand. Yeah, that's exciting. And yeah. this is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, <clears throat> it, it looks like a copper penny. I mean, that's obviously... But it's... it's shiny, if you're, shiny. If you're listening. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's but it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. Yeah. So Jason, no issues with production of the copper iron product like you know that's been out of the industry for a number of years as far as the ability to it, make it, a copper iron yes it has but uh, we found a way to do it okay and uh, yeah it's, it's been very good so yeah quality control and, and feel is excellent on that product so yeah I know early on this iron selling extremely well for the store uh, everybody all the better players that hit it um, to a man, I've all thought that it's the softest feeling forged iron. That I was going to say, well, so that. let's talk a more about, so how does the copper enhance the feel of, of hitting the clubs? So typically chrome is, um, uh, although beautiful, it's a very soft material that usually goes out on the uh, outer layer of a forged golf club. Um, it's softer than the uh, forged steel that's underneath it. And um, by doubling it up and having another uh, softer metal that's underneath the chrome, it's kind of doubles the softness. It doubles the feel of the golf club up underneath it. And you know, forged irons are still very soft compared to a cast golf club, but now you've got multiple layers, multiple soft layers that are on the outside of the golf club. So especially like when you're chipping, pitching in and around the greens, where the compression's really not ever getting to the forging underneath, all you're feeling is that the, is the chrome and then the copper. And that doesn't help hurt the integrity <clears throat> of the club at all. It's not at all. No, it's all plated on there, and yeah, it's it's done really well. And it's very interesting because we have harmonics machines that we test all of our irons uh -huh. with for feel, and the machine couldn't pick it up, but all of the staff players could. Wow. So it's very it's very subtle. Yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Very fun. So yeah, uh, and, and, and a few new heads, and you might <clears throat> give us a uh, glimpse of... <clears throat> when is this, me. I'm sorry, when is the copper uh, limited edition iron This will out? be available Master's Week. Master's Week, yeah. very good. But all of our MP20s and our MMCs and our hot metal blades are built with this copper underlay. Very so cool. So any set that uh, folks come into the super shop to get fitted for in the MP line will have this copper underlay. And I know Ken... With the chrome plating over it 
for protection because obviously yeah. it's very soft and it will ding. So it's more of a collectible set. You could play with it. Put on your wall. Um, but it is extremely soft. So. And I know you and I have talked about that on our weekly live um, show that we yeah. do as well. Jason, there's I know there's three heads. Maybe give kind of a brief description on kind of the player type for each one of those heads. Absolutely. So we have a hot metal blade, which can go up to about a 15 handicap. And basically this is a forge chromoly face with a hollow back with no foam or um, anything that would dampen feel. It's basically just hollow with some tungsten inserts uh, for weighting in the two through seven iron. And so that is a forge club that a mid handicap could play. Um, and then we have the MMC, um, which is a great head here. I'll show you that one. Um, this, is, this is just a tremendous head because um, unlike most inserts, this insert is titanium, which is extremely light. Um, it has a tungsten plug in the toe. But the difference here is that we actually forge that insert in. There's no epoxy. Um, mm -hmm. It's just set in in the cooling process. Um, so you're not, there's nothing between you and the face, and it's, it's pure Mizuno feel. So this will be for um, you know, your high single digit handicap. And then we have the MP20, um, which is really your player's iron, could go all the way, all the way down. And, uh, but it is a little bit of a progressive set. You, know, you have progressive weighting within the MP20, um, so you do have a blade that's more forgiving, uh, could go up to probably a mid, mid single digit. Uh, player there, You're seeing so. the fitters actually fit multiple heads within the same sets of irons out yeah, on the floor. Yeah, typically, too, right? yep. It might be the, the 20 for the short irons and then something a little more playable for the mid or longer irons. For yeah, sure. and that's, yeah. that's happening within <clears throat> about 80% um, of our sets now. We're doing combo sets yes. and all of these flow together. And um, we have a great tool called the Shaft Optimizer, uh, Shaft Optimizer 3D, which is available here um, at Hagen uh, with all the excellent fitters. And when you do these combo sets, um, within that software, you can actually um, change the lofts and so everything flows together. So if you wanted a hot metal blade and then an MMC in the short iron or MP20 or even something in the JPX line, you can um, have a fluid fit to where all the lofts will match and all the swing weights and all the shaft offerings that we have. So everything will flow together and make a really nice set of clubs. So. Yeah, nice. that's, that's excellent. That's one thing that the team loves about Mizuno is the precision. From, from set to set, and again, the ability to have that combo set and have everything match, so. Yeah, and I think it's really neat. We, we take the tour every year of uh, where clubs are built um, in Atlanta, and uh, we always ask, hey, where do the tour pros heads come from? And they just point to the same bin um, that everybody you know gets their sets built out of. So we don't have special heads uh, for the tour players. We don't make backup sets for them. Um, our quality control is so good. We're plus or minus three grams on the head. And so, you know, the, the sets that you'll be fitting uh, for your customers and the excellent fitters fit here. Um, they just come right out of the same headstock and uh, it's, it's really high quality stuff. So. You've taken that same approach with the irons and kind of applied it towards the drivers too, where it's three models under one family name. Um, let's go into that. Yes, so the ST200 series, uh, we do have three <coughs> very distinct heads for three different styles of players, styles of swings. Um, the exciting thing for us, and uh, we call this world ready because we have one driver for the entire globe now. We used to have some specialized product in Japan and then specialized for Europe and people would always say, hey, can we get so, such and such a driver in? You know, unfortunately not. But what we did is we brought all of our designers together this year and we have American design and Japanese design and um, the exotic materials that they are used to working with and um, really sharp minds that we have here and so we've created this ST200 line um, and we use beta titanium uh, which is very light and very strong carbon fiber in the crowns and um, you have a low launch a mid launch and a high launch driver so you can really fit a wide range of players and get the best performance um, across the board. And I really like that this has been the um, theme among um, a lot of the manufacturers this year which is one um, driver, but three different, you know, multiple models of that. I think that, in my opinion, um, simplifies the process for the consumer um, and uh, makes it easier of a story to uh, just to tell. Uh, so would you mind telling that story with, with the uh, ST200 for you guys? Definitely. So we have the ST200X, which okay. is the high launch driver does have a little bit of a draw bias. So generally this would be 
uh, someone that has a little bit of trouble getting the ball in the air or maybe slicing it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it does come stock with a 39 gram shaft and a 37 <coughs> gram grip and it works best in that combination. So it's less than 270 grams when you put all that together at 45 and three quarter inches. That is so, amazing. So I mean, we just, just for people that are listening, clubs just recently got under 300 grams and so for it to be another 10% low, it's very lightweight. And it really works works great as a kit. Um, we actually had to uh, make a proprietary shaft, the 39 gram shaft. We had to find something that was light but stable. So we developed the shaft, it's called an M Fusion. And um, when you put that all together, you get really great swing speed. Um, you do get a really nice high launch. And um, interesting thing is we have Chris Kirk and Lucas Glover on staff that actually play that head um, because it really is an anti-fade or anti-slice and they really like to hit the draw. So they will, um, be in that head and, uh, and it's really working well for them. So um, the ST200 is our mid-spin and that has a 12 gram back weight and it's around 300 grams total weight and we have a really wide range of shafts. So you have Diamanas and Atmos um, and Tenseis as stock options at no upcharge. Um, so we have quite a wide range and they're uh, authentic issue, they're, they're uh, the real spec on the shafts. And that's a great performing driver because again, uh, forged beta titanium face, so extremely light, extremely strong, carbon fiber crown, and uh, the ball speed in the sweet area that we're seeing on this is, is really strong. Um, it's testing very well and uh, just great performance. So really high MOI, but um, there's a balance between you know getting the MOI up high enough um, and then keeping the spin low. Uh, so you still get that travel because uh, and so what we've done is really high COR, um, really nice MOI, and just great ball speed off of this head. So, so that's probably fitting the widest range of golfer. And <coughs> Definitely. Driver head, right? Yeah, the, the X is a specialty club, and then the 200 is going to fit most players there because it's mid-spin and really good performance. And then we have the 200G, which uh, we refer to as the spin killer. Um, this is... Uh, we have the wave sole, which actually um, is a thin channel uh, right behind the face, and that produces more spring, um, but it also tunes the sound, and uh, we made it really thin this year, so we could get the sole weights all the way up toward the face and really reduce spin for that high spin player, usually high speed player, and um, that's working very well, so. Difference so. between weights forward and weights back is like 500 CPMs, right? It can be, yeah, yeah it can be. We've actually had one player test almost a thousand. Wow. Um, that's the outlier, but uh, yeah, I would say four to 500 is pretty typical. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so when you are fitting a driver, you're wanting it, uh, the spin to be within a certain range. And uh, on the low side, or on the high side, probably Four or five thousand. Yeah, four or five thousand. Probably not <coughs> quite that high. Probably four thousand is kind of where you want it. You can get it down, you know, sometimes as low as twenty four hundred, right. somewhere in there. And that's kind of the range to optimize your distance out there. So tour players put a tremendous amount of spin on the golf ball typically, and so um, that's why the re well the you know the, all all of us Joe Schmoes typically want the weight low and back. That does create spin. And so it's a combination of moment of inertia, loft, and spin on the driver. A lot of the players are good enough players where they're hitting it nearly dead center every time, so they want the weight as forward as they can to get as much spin off the driver as, as they can. So, so on the G head, we're trading a little bit of stability for lowering the spin. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, okay. generally, you know, speed is spin. So if those guys are swinging harder or gals are swinging harder, then they're going to produce more spin. So okay. that's where the back weight would work against them and actually produce too much spin. So yeah. that's and that we, has a tendency to hit kind of a balloon shot and, and have the ball fall out of the sky without any you know, overspin or roll out. And uh, by reducing that spin, you're going to get some more distance on it. Yeah. All right. I know this caught your attention more than anything. Maybe ask your question here. So... Well, I don't know if you... I don't think that golf ball is legal size. <laughs> Are you yeah. sure? No. Might fit in the cup. <laughs> Larger golf ball, go straighter. But no, if you're listening, well, if you're listening, holding kind of a foam uh, replica of the new Mizuno golf ball, uh, in addition to normal dimples, it has a lot of tiny dimples. So the yes. question is for Jason, what are the tiny dimples doing on your They are micro balls? dimples. So uh, <laughs> believe it or not, Mizuno has been involved in aerodynamics for about 100 years. Uh, we were founded in 1906 and we actually worked on gliders 
um, in the early part of the 20th century. So I've been working with, uh, with that type of thing for a long time. So the thing that we're excited about, and we've developed this 566V and 566 golf ball. Uh, 566V is a three piece and um, 566 is a two piece. But the real advantage of this ball is the micro dimple. Um, you have a dual dimple design and then you have a micro dimple which sits on the ridge. So the dual dimples lift as the ball takes off and then as it starts to slow down and lose velocity, then the micro dimple kicks in and increases the carry. So this um, should be great for the average player in terms of um, how much distance they're getting. It should be great in the wind and um, it's just a, an excellent ball and it's gonna sell for $29.99 in the three piece version. So the claim so is that the descent <coughs> is going to be less vertical. It's going to be more horizontal based on the new dimple design. Correct, based on the micro dimple. Okay. Yeah, so it should flatten the trajectory, allow it to carry a little bit more and uh, definitely get a little bit more roll. This uh, joins a already existing uh, couple balls that are in the line that came out last year also, right? Yes, we do have the RB Tour and the RB Tour X, uh, which are, were our first golf ball, and um, 360 dimples on those, dual dimple design, and we uh, we have two four-piece golf balls there, RB Tour, RB Tour X, so excellent aerodynamics, very soft cover, uh, plays really well for the good player. But uh, this this 566V is, is going to be for your average player, going to be a big help. Great. I'm not sure we were finished <laughs> talking about this before you went off to the new golf ball. This right. will have just come out by the time the show uh, airs. Yep. Uh, retail is $29.99 uh, for which one? For the V and then $21.99 for the regular uh, okay. 566. And for me, the easiest way to remember that is that's the number of dimples that are on the golf ball. So it's 566. Yes, so, yeah. absolutely. Including yeah. both sets right. of dimples? Yes. That's yeah. it, right? Yes, the dual dimples and the micro dimples, 566 yeah. total. Which again, for those that are you know not familiar with the number of dimples, most dimples have three twenty to three eighty usually there in number of dimples. So, so our RB Tour and RB Tour X are three sixty. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So and Just so this reference. has you know a and lot then, more dimples on it. Other than one being three piece, what what would be the difference? That's the main difference. Okay. This is uh, the V is an ion armor cover, so it's a blend, basically a Serlin blend. So it's a little softer, a little stickier around the greens. And then the 566 is your distance ball. It's a okay. tougher cover, so it'll stand up to everything. What I do think is interesting about this ball is that it's they're both of them are very low compression golf balls in relationship to everything else yes. in the marketplace, but also very low spin. Typically, when you get a low compression golf ball, it's a high spin ball. Um, but because of this dimple characteristic, it's actually a very low spin ball. So it's kind of in a category of it unto itself. Hmm. It's interesting because this is this is sort of a different golf ball than anything else that's out on the market right now, huh? Very much so. Yeah, we've seen pimples within dimples. So there was an old top flight ball that had raised dimples within the dimples, but nothing else <coughs> that has been. Uh, a raised dimple or a pimple? You've it, now it, used both no, words. No, it was a pimple. <laughs> Okay. And this is more of a, a dimple, dimple within a dimple instead of a pimple within a dimple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. This show's gone off the rails. Yes, very much so. Excellent. I know there's one other category of club I would love to see, and that's uh, a new category for Mizuno with your new putters. Absolutely. This is the new M Craft, and oh, this, this is, is in pretty. this is in Mizuno blue for you. And I love this have... Mizuno blue. Thank you. That's we one of the prettier those, putters that are on the marketplace this year. Okay, everyone who's listening to our podcast, seriously, stop now. <laughs> go to the YouTube channel and go well, however minutes, many minutes in. We are 25, 28 something. You have to check out this beautiful, beautiful wow. color. It's definitely worth seeing. So this is, is our gorgeous. first putter in 12 years. As wow. you know, we've had <laughs> some uh, fantastic designers. We've had Scotty Cameron and Bet Nardi and T.P. Mills uh, yep. through the years. Those are a couple good names. Uh, yeah, not bad. I've heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. And so this is um, really special for us because we wanted to make, uh, because feel is so important in a putter, we wanted to make something that is out of our 1025 milled carbon steel. Uh, so this is one of the only milled and forged putters on the market. So you should have a very soft feel and it is 1025, so it is a little bit heavy. So we have a weight kit included. It comes standard with your eight gram weights and then you have three gram and 13 grams um, in the kit and it does have a special torque wrench. Um, those three grams are really light uh, So it doesn't take much to, to get those in um, they're really light and thin but the fantastic uh, 
feel of this is really you know built off of our irons and it's that 1025 carbon steel it's got a nice deep, deep mill on the face um, so it provides a great roll but the, the touch is really unbelievable on these and we have three um, head shapes and you can get um, any of those in Mizuno blue or white satin or black and uh, so we have um, one with a swoop neck and then we have a plumber's neck uh, blade and then we also have um, a face balance mallet so you have a really nice combination we can't make anything too too large just because it is such a solid material and um, we're just going for traditional shapes we're all about the feel and uh, this putter's been doing really well uh, awesome is, and so all models come with gorgeous. the weight kit Jason? yes yes yeah. for 299 and that's oh, really that's... a really unique story for mizuno we can't there are you know maybe some models he mentioned or some names he mentioned earlier where you can order them in different weights but they don't come with weights to right. tinker with yes. and so um, mm -hmm. for someone who might want to have more of an open to close uh, putter stroke you can actually lighten the toe or heavy the you know to heavy the toe to make it a little bit more closed off and you can adjust your stroke by adjusting those weights in there and no other manufacturer that I know of is, is letting you do that with with the, the putter yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we, just, we get that request all yeah the time, this is so. just another layer to our custom fitting you yeah know, if you want to change the toe flow and um, we do a lot of fitted clubs yeah and uh, and this is just a great way to do it so people can tinker with it and they can get fit for their particular arc and uh, really build a custom putter for themselves for a great price and a great feel. So. I think you're going to need to get me one, Ken, because I just like the look of it. It has to be blue, right? Yeah, it does have to be blue. <laughs> That'll be a good investment. <laughs> 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 so I'm not sitting on your desk. <laughs> It is, uh, it, again, it's as, beautiful, it though. Is, it's it is, it's it is absolutely stunning. stunningly beautiful. Yeah. I can get my next color nails to match this as well. It would be really pretty. Yeah. Oh, and with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. And then Ooh, there's a see? T20 wedge we in the look, same Mizuno look. blue. Jason, you're costing me a wedge now. <laughs> Maybe a so, wedge. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a whole iron set that matches this uh, color? Not yet? yet, just the copper. I need yeah, the yeah, oh. just, yeah, just just the copper, but uh, we're actually uh, we get a lot of requests for blue irons, so it may be coming down the line. But we sell um, a, a ton of blue wedges, and we do offer custom stamping to personalize those. And yeah. we have every loft from forty-five to sixty-one. So whatever. Yeah, actually, with with Mizuno, that's actually another really cool feature. Is let's that, talk about that. Yeah, is that when you custom or when you build a wedge with them, you can actually have it stamped um, and have it personalized with your initials or your favorite slogan or you know the initials of your high school or whatever you want to do to have your own name I on need it. a custom blue wedge that says Hazel Rockets to match my new um, putter. We could do that on two wedges. Yes. That's a <laughs> lot of stuff. Six, six character hmm. limits. Six so we could do Morton, we could do Hagen. Yeah. Could no problem Jennifer, there, Jen. but uh, Jen. Jen, yeah. Jen. And then it would sit on your desk forever and ever. <laughs> so yeah. Her well, birthday's look, coming up. I know what you're going to do. Yeah. So. You know how much trouble I'm going to do. No, that's, that's, that's why, hey, she asked for it. Beautiful. Yeah, right. they, uh, they, they, again, I really love the blue. And it's surprisingly durable, too. Um, you know, when it first came out, I was a little nervous, especially on a wedge as you're grinding it through sand all the time. And um, it, I won't be grinding mine through sand. <laughs> <laughs> But the underlay is 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 also uh, shiny, and so it, it it actually wears really really well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We put the micro groove on the face underneath the plating, so it's very durable, and there's very little difference in performance between a wet ball and a dry ball now, because of the micro groove we have under the the blue plating. We call that ion plating there. Um, so it's it's a really great wedge. Um, it's it's 1025 elite, just like our irons. Um, so the feel is really good. And uh, then you have that performance of the micro groove underneath, and uh, it really, really spins well. And we also change the grooving um, based on the loft. So you'll have a different grooving in the 61 versus the 45 because you need a different type of shot there, full shot versus well, partial that's, shot. That's so. important to me personally well. <laughs> as well. So. You never know when you may need it. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, All right, thank I finally you. found clubs that I like. <laughs> <laughs> this was an expensive so, podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> You're gonna be blue plating sorry, golf sorry. balls. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for making great Ladies stuff. Ladies' dress shoes, boots, all kinds of stuff. So yeah. 
Uh, well, Jason, thank you very much for coming on with us yes, today. Thank you very much. My, yeah, my pleasure. This was a blast. Thank yeah, you. we're really excited about all the new products coming yep. out this year. Fantastic. And with that, which I'm super excited about, <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsor, Morton Golf Sales, and we will be right back with our Jack Bergeroni experience, which I believe we're getting to actually get to eat some food. Will it be Jack Bergeroni? You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Hey, Bill here. I wanted to pause real quick to thank our sponsor, MortonGolfSales.com. Morton Golf Sales is the number one online retailer for all your golfing needs. From the newest clubs on the market to the classics that you can't find anywhere else, Morton Golf Sales has the best products and customer service at the lowest possible prices. Want to check out their huge online inventory of clubs, clothing, golf balls, accessories, and save 12% on your first order? Just use coupon code ROCKETS at checkout on MortonGolfSales.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Now, back to the show. Mom's Beef Hash has a first name. It's from a can we see. But we all have another name. We call it untasty. We hate to eat it every day. And but if you, you ask us, us why, we'll say... Cause mama's hash tastes like trash and we should feed it to the dog. Welcome to the Jack Burgeroni Experience. Welcome back. Boy, did you guys miss the intermission. Um, I didn't miss it. I was right there. Yeah. Okay, Jack Burgeroni. Ken, do you want to describe it since you are the one who um, designed it? We are serving Jack Burgeroni today. I can see the utensils and the plates. Yes. We are not. Bill, I came up with the greatest segment ever. Eating. Okay. Eating. Yeah. Are you on board? I am, but it depends on what we're eating. Yeah. There we go. So the thought process was that these protein bars, kind of snack bars, there's like, when you go to the grocery store, there's 8 million of them. So they have all kinds of different uh, protein values. Certainly some taste better than the others. And I think you and I would be on the same uh, wavelength that they have to taste good to have any value. We're going to consume them, yes. Yeah. So I thought we'd have a little taste test. Okay. I like that taste tests. I like food. So I'm totally <laughs> on board on this. At what time did you go shopping? And where was the Reese's peanut butter cups? And why are you putting all bars? the candy bars over there? I'm gonna of on this I'm side. gonna cut them oh, and gonna I'm, gonna the share, I'm gonna share them. So a Reese's peanut butter cup has lots of protein in it, right? Mm, no. Compared to these things, I don't think so. Right. However, I guarantee this tastes better than anything that's on the table over there. For sure. Wow. All right. all right, I'm looking. No, it has we're not five doing, grams we're not, of protein. We're not starting That's not with enough. That. These all have probably 20, 15 to 20, 25. Yeah. Oh. So what's the first one, Jennifer? Okay, the first one that I'm cutting into, and the I'm saving some of these so that my guys can have some too. Yeah. Okay, is the Power Bar Protein Plus chocolate, I want the little piece, chocolate peanut butter. It has 20 grams of protein, four grams of fiber. It's gluten free. I'm also going to measure, tell you guys the sugar because you should be looking at sugar. 12 grams of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. Okay. It has six grams of fat, three grams saturated. What do you guys think of it? It's very chewy. Good so far. Oh, it's good. I like it. <clears throat> I'd give that one a thumbs up. I do too. I would vote for smaller pieces on the next 27 candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to be able to consume any of these. Okay. I have to That's talk good. with my mouth full. This right. is the kind whole fruit and chocolate. Banana and dark chocolate. That sounds good. Whole fruit? This only has one gram of protein. Where did this come from? The same place that all the other ones came from. I would just put, store. put it to the side. We shouldn't even be wasting our time with one gram of protein. Well, <laughs> what are you talking about? This is Ken's favorite. I'm oh, guaranteeing. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh my God. All right. This is a banana thing. Here. I'll I got this one. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Smaller pieces. This oh, has. That one does not smell good. Two grams of fat. <laughs> 18 grams of sugar. This has a ton of sugar in it. Well. Where is the napkin? <laughs> that is not good. Can you, what are you talking about? You're a banana boy. 
I know, but Actually, I guarantee I like you. that. Right, I like so that. That is horrible. You do like it? I did like that. I no. wouldn't eat that again, though. No. You know what that one what? needs? More sugar and more chocolate. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, mean, no, I didn't like that. You put a. You just said you did. I'm changing my mind up. <laughs> that is awful. There's no way I can, can make this go down. I'm choking on this chocolate banana over here. This is gross. So we did like the kind thing. All right. That was gross. Thanks for bringing that one in, Junior. That's great. Oh my gosh. I've had this one before. I this is one like of my favorite. One. Okay, so, this is the new. I'm gonna cut your fingers cheating. off. This is cheating. You guys have already had this. Well, this is. Well, not this morning. But okay. But this one, this like one historically before. Okay, this is the Nugo Dark Mint Chocolate Chip. <clears throat> 13 grams of protein, 200 calories, uh, 15 grams of sugar, and 6 grams of total fat. So it's higher on the sugar. I'm noticing a correlation between how good they are and how much sugar is in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's mint chocolate chip. It's my favorite. No. You don't is like it? it? No, I do like it. I was thinking like... I would love Oreo, new go. I like I love new go bars though. I like them. What's the brand name of that one? New go. New go. Yeah, I like it's crispy. It's it, like the last the kind bar we had. It's kind of tarry and chewy, and this more one has a more Christmas to it. I like the texture better. It's like a cookie. Yeah, that's a good description. That's probably why I like it better. Agreed. <laughs> okay, now oh, this is also a new go. I haven't seen this one. Stronger peanut cluster, 25 gram. Why are we eating these, by the way? What was your point of this? Just because we're hungry when we film? Um, because it gives a lot of energy. I think you just cut that one piece and cut it in three three smaller pieces. I think Jennifer needed to wow eat the stronger before she started cutting. Don't the make stronger. her mad, Kenny. Look at her the way she handles that knife. Yeah, you could be sorry. Okay. This one <laughs> looks dense. Wow. <laughs> no, that's enough. Just let's share that one piece. Yeah. There we go. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Petrified candy bar? <laughs> Come on. Hold on, don't get near me. I don't think Holy we even need to need to try this one. Holy moly. What is this? Clearly okay, you're this on the golf course go. trying to get energy. <laughs> yeah. Where are we doing you this? You put is... your teeth into this and your teeth come out of your face and <laughs> get stuck to the candy this bar is, and the wrapper. This is no. another new go thing though. This is um um yeah nope don't like the that the serving one. <laughs> size of this is two bar is, is two though i don't know why you would get two out of this um Maybe if, ah, it's really hard it's 310 i hate these things though really one of these things right. is actually two servings yeah come on pass is it no good next wait i haven't tried it yet it's not good it's it's not as good as the other go. If you put that in, you're not going to be able to talk for the rest of the segment. All right, well, I'm just going to have a taste. Okay. Mm, it's a lot. All right, well, while you're All doing right. that, let me get my health food for when I'm on the golf Wait, course. Wait, what did you bring? <laughs> All right. Oh. Why are you bringing? Are you bring to share? I thought the guys were not filming that. What is it? Krispy Kreme donuts. Can you read the how many how much proteins in this, Kenny? Yeah, none. You said you wanted some sugar. All right, what's oh. the next one over here? That was terrible. That's yeah. Could have told you that. Here, let me hide this now. <laughs> wow. All right. So you really do need to be careful what you get because. All right, this one is actually a one of the we new golf it. specific ones. Yes. yes. Why and are I've they golf? Why are they golf specific? Because it's called a birdie bar. And right. it's for, um, Help yourself. our health expert told us a few segments back or a few podcasts ago, it's slow release energy, I think, on this one. So the Birdie Bar, this is an oatmeal chocolate chip. It has 18 grams of protein, 4 grams of sugar. Now, nice. my nutritionist said you really want to look at, when you get a, something like that, 4 grams of sugar. This is actually considered a good thing. See? So that would be good. Uh, it has 230 calories, so... This is actually a better choice than some of these other things we've picked up. What's the flavor on this one? Oatmeal oh, chocolate chip. Mm. That's actually pretty good. It's tolerable. It's okay. okay. But I think it's more healthy for you, so that's okay. All right. Yeah. My feeling is if you did like a fondue pot and dipped that into chocolate fondue, I then it like would that. actually be pretty good. Yeah. 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 I didn't like that. Or you could just have real food and not have this stuff. Um... 
Omega. Three gra or grass fed whey protein bar. Sounds like a steak. 14 gram protein omega 3 to support heart health. Where'd this come from? This is chocolate peanut. She keeps asking where they came from. <laughs> they all came from the same grocery store. <laughs> this also has five grams of sugar. Why is everything peanut? <laughs> Why did you butter? only buy peanut? <laughs> you guys, that's make too it. much. Yes. I can't. Yeah. I don't, just have this a. One is from the Nugo School of Hardness, clearly. All right, I'm having a little taste. Here, I'll give you the big one. one. <laughs> all that. that is too much. Yep, it's grass-fed. Wow, that is awful. <laughs> that tastes like eating a blade of grass. <laughs> what is wrong with that bar? Kenny, you're fired from getting. We are never gonna get. I mean, we, we got are a couple not of gonna get. Ones, but there's a lot of bad stuff there. We are not gonna get. Um, I don't know. What do you get when you get people who sponsor you? We're not gonna get you sponsors. That literally tasted like lawn clippings, everyone. <laughs> I, I mean, didn't it? That's not nice to say. It's this is a not Scout great. Organic Chocolate Cherry. I do like chocolate, and I like cherry, so I have high hopes. I'm gonna make. This one looks in it yeah, appears good. like it's similar to Threes. the kind bar though. Yeah, we'll see. There you go. Now Jennifer's getting it. I hope we didn't pay for this out of our own money. Um, okay. This bar. This is good. Ten grams of fat. For health, I would do that. Six grams of fiber, ten grams of protein, and uh I can't tell. It says zero added sugar. What is this? It's actually pretty good. It's, it's good. really good. It's not really good. It's not really good, Jennifer. I did like this. Yeah. I like sugar. I, I do like sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I like cherry, too. I like that. All right, are we going to do these? It tastes like a big bar. A little bit. Yeah, it's better than that. Are we going to do these last five? Um. Seriously? I actually don't know if I like that after I swallowed it. All right, one more, and then we'll determine which one we like the best. Jennifer likes the taste initially, <laughs> but then it, when it goes down her gullet, all of a sudden she doesn't like it anymore. I didn't like God. that either. All right, so what? Uh, what all right, this is, is the this? kind protein bar <coughs> almond butter dark chocolate with 12 grams of protein. Um, oh, almond butter. Maybe this is like an almond roca. Eight grams of sugar. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually what? pretty good. It's kind of like trail mix. It was a little better after the initial. Actually, taste. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like legitimately like that. That one's probably the best one so far. Okay, is that your actually, favorite? No, this one's my favorite. Because I like almonds. All right, I give that one a thumbs up. Which is the new go? Which dark, one? dark mint chocolate chip. Okay, I'd give the Scout Organic <clears throat> Chocolate Cherry one a big thumbs up, and then the very first one we had, which was good. the Power Bar Protein yeah. Plus. Those would be the top three, I think, in terms of taste. Okay, the only ones that I would consider eating would be the Dark New Go Mint Chocolate Chip, and this Kind Protein Almond Butter Dark Chocolate, and the first one. Which was the Power Bar Protein Plus. Yep. Those were good. And then we didn't eat all of them. I'm sorry, but. We don't need to. Yeah, this was hard. We're so stacked with protein. I think now we do that, need yeah. to try this last protein bar, however, just to clear the taste of the other ones. All right. You guys go for that one. I have my own protein <laughs> <laughs> button right here. I'm okay. working on it. There you go, Ken. Good, though. You all right. That one. There's really just not a comparison between a Reese's cup, All right, peanut butter so cup, this and anything bar else on this table. Nope. Is a Reese's mm. peanut butter cup. It has 22 grams of. So actually, if it's a if you only have one, which I am, it's 11 grams of sugar and um, five grams of protein. So it's not much different than one of those other one. bars. Okay, you can. Is it this really one. five grams or two and a half grams? Two and a half. There you go. And then I'll cut this one in half. Yeah. Since you didn't get one, Ken. No, I'm just kidding. He you can it. give it to Bill. No, I don't want it. All right. I'm good. I'm not going to eat that. All right. <clears throat> and this one tastes better than any Everything. of the others. Anything else on the table. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. wonder why. All right, so that is the <clears throat> scientific uh, 
examination Wait. that we did on all of these. So what did we do this for and what are we saying? Should you take a protein bar on the golf course? Or should you take a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup or a Krispy Kreme Donut? No, see, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that if you take a protein bar on your onto the golf course... Make it a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Make it a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I think or, that's... Or Krispy Kreme Donut. Yes. Or right. one of the three that we like. Yes. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us this week. You can follow us on any of the podcast channels that you're listening to us on or on YouTube. Uh, on Morton Golf Sales, that's our channel. Or you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Jen underscore Morton underscore. Or these wackos over here. Um, what are you guys on? I'm on Twitter at Ken Morton Jr. I'm on Instagram at Ken Morton Jr. Yes. He's he's not on anything. Yeah. Um, Bills in the Stone Ages. And with that, we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us as always. Bye, everyone.